Today, I would like to talk a little bit about um, the Bastion Lepage because over the years, so many people have said to me, Barbara, what's your favorite painting? And I have to be political. And I have to say, I have many favorites, and I do, I truly do. But if pressed, this is my favorite. And I think I fell in love with it when I was about eight. And um, I was taken to the Leighton Art Gallery. And I remember when I saw this painting, my heart fell apart. It just, I just loved it. I just couldn't get enough of it. And I began to fantasize. And this was my grandpa. And I was out in the woods with my grandpa, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, I've loved it ever since. You can read a lot about him, and I encourage you to do so. But we'll just um, talk a little bit about his background. He's, they always refer to him as coming from peasant stock. I don't know what that means, but I like it. I want to be from peasant stock. Uh, when he was young, he went into France to study at the Ecole de Beaux-Arts and um, was accepted and did very well. His parents were having a fit. His father did not want him to be an artist. So for a period of time, he was a postal clerk for a couple of years just to please Papa. But then that was enough and he went off and got some uh, formal training. Then he enlisted in a, in a regiment of the French army as a sharpshooter. He got wounded and he got very sick from it and had trouble with it the rest of his life. And then at the very young age, just before he died, he got stomach cancer. So he had a very painful ending. And one of his uh, neighbors, they, they talk about uh, taking care of him. He painted right up and drew right up to practically the day he died. But I think he was only like 36 years old. So uh, he was kind of at the height of his career. So it's kind of sad. When I think back in my visual memory of artists at this period of history, I think of people like Millet, who did the gleaners and all those wonderful harvest pictures in the, in the fields. And I think of um, Courbet because of the, um, the technique that Bastien Lepage has uh, developed here. And of course, we think of what? The Impressionists, right? Because look how impressionistically rendered some of the application of paint and the brush strokes. And I even suspect he's used a palette knife in some areas of this. And I, I urge you to get up close and personal with the front lower half or even lower third of the painting and observe the brush strokes. I swear he was here at 10 o'clock this morning to paint quickly some of those blades of grass and they're just perfection. And then he has this incredible realism. What was going on at this time was realism, naturalism, and somebody said to me one day, what's the difference between the two? I have no idea, but I made something up, so I'll share it with you. Realism, when you're painting fruit, for example, you would paint pears and apples, and they would look very beautiful. Naturalism, you'd put in the wormholes and the bruises and the skin scars. So that helped me, so I hope it helps you. But there's an incredible feeling of um, nature and how nature, I mean, your, your mind then travels to the fact that nature recycles. And then you get if you have an active imagination like I do, you begin to think about the grandfather, Père Jacques, an elderly gentleman. He's old, he's tired, he's wise, he's been through life. So the contrast between the innocence of youth, this darling child who hasn't a care in the world, picking these beautiful flowers in the wild, and this burden of the grandfather, the woodcutter. So there's a, there's a lot you can play into this if you want, but if you don't want, that's fine too. It's just a lovely picture of a grandfather and his granddaughter, 
and um, the beauty of nature and the woods. And the way he's presented it, um, Jules Sebastian Lepas said, I, I want to be able to capture nature, real nature for people. And I want to be able to portray that. And I said, boy, did he. I mean, this is so exquisite. I was so pleased when it was cleaned. We, we gave ourselves the gift of cleaning this before we reopened uh, the reinstallation of our collection because the hat that he's wearing almost is purple now. And if you look closely in the ear liners on the top of his ears, there's an alizarin crimson paint brushed in there right off the tube. And his cravat, I thought it was black. All of a sudden, guess what? There's red in that cravat. His wonderful coat, um, his, the, the tones of flesh, his ability to capture the soul of a person. He's really a wonderful, wonderful painter. So I think all of these things come together and um, they make a wonderful uh, excuse to sit here for a long time and maybe be inspired to write a poem. Mm -hmm.